for the audio or you can even watch back Giving players all the props or put them on blast We don't give no hot cakes, only talk facts We're giving all our devotion Riding high on this wave of emotion Going all out, yeah, cause this is our time No, we no stopping us till we reach the finish line Can hold it down. Shout out to my man Sammy, got it off the ground. And to all the listeners tuned in right now. Got debates, analysis, and speculation. This is sports talk for the new generation. You know where to find us, got a reputation. Sick podcast, your number one sports destination. We're giving all our devotion, riding high on this wave of emotion. Going all out, yeah, cause this is our time. No, we no stopping us till we reach the finish line. to listen to the sick podcast with tony maradero 55 seconds left in the penalty a minute and 27 seconds left in regulation time boston four montreal three 
Lafleur coming out rather gingerly on the right side. He gives it into the mayor back to Lafleur. Oh! The sickest Montreal Canadiens podcast. <laughs> You're in the fall. Sports entertainment like no other. Rejoint, on lui fait perdre la rondelle une passe devant. Et c'est Canadiens. Ce sera la victoire des Canadiens. You found the dogs! John, you found the dogs! He found the dogs! And all together they worked a young team to the top. And now a 24th Stanley Cup banner will hang from the rafters of the famous forum in Montreal. The Canadians win the Stanley Cup! Brought to you by Energy Transportation Group. Driven to be different. La TV. Embrace your true nature. And Playground, your premier gaming destination. It's going to be sick. Marinero on this Wednesday, August 9th. It is one minute past 10 o'clock. How is everyone doing tonight? I hope you are well. Thanks for watching, everyone. You're watching right now on YouTube Live, Facebook Live, Twitter Live. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, please do so. I'll tell you right now, the Sick Podcast is brought to you in part by Energy Transportation Group, recently named by Deloitte and CIBC as one of Canada's best managed companies, the country's leading business award, recognizing innovative and world-class companies, the best managed Canadian companies. Designation fuels energy's purpose of creating progress for their customers their employees and their communities join a winning team and check out energy's career page for available opportunities also brought to in part by brewed in quebec a winner of a dozen international awards la bit at tb offers quality microbrewery beers made with premium ingredients for everyone's taste la bit at tb embrace your true nature and of course brought to you in part by playground uh, you have to check out Playground if you haven't checked it out already, by the way, because um, don't miss Playground's August Million Poker Series from August 23rd to September 4th with $1 million in guaranteed prize pools, seven championship ring events, and a $600,000 guaranteed main event located just over the Mercier Bridge, only minutes from downtown Montreal Playground. Every Thursday, as of 5 p.m., order a fried chicken plate for only $11. I don't know about you, but I love fried chicken. I just love it. All right, okay. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going solo tonight. Uh, there's a couple of topics that I want to talk to you about. And, of course, I'm going to need your collaboration in this because I say I'm going solo, but I'm going to tell you right now, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the phone lines tonight. And, of course, the number is toll-free. It's one 585 Seven four two five. It's one eight 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 five eight five six. S I C K S I C K. So there you have it. So the phone lines are open, and um, you know what are we going to talk about tonight? Well, I'm going to tell you about the um, a very important night, which is going to be tomorrow night. All right. So tomorrow night, August tenth, um, at Le Centre Vidéotron. In Quebec City, will take place the 15th edition of Le Proam Gagné Bergeron. All right. Uh, it's going to be the last one for Patrice Bergeron. And Patrice Bergeron, tomorrow night, is going to wear that Boston Bruins jersey. Not for the last time, because I would imagine at one point he'll probably play in some alumni games with them. Uh, but some of his teammates are going to be there with him tomorrow night. Brad Marchand, Matt Grizzlick, Brandon Carlo, and Connor Clifton. As a matter of fact, they're there with him. Earlier today, uh, he met members of the media for about 40 minutes in what they call La Vieille Capitale, of course, to participate uh, in uh, Media Day for the pro uh, which will be the last one with his association with Simon Gagné, benefiting Pignon Bleu, Lucan, and Les Fondations Philippe Boucher et Maurice Tanguay. They're expecting over 10,000 fans in the stands, and it's going to be something to pay tribute to one of the greatest gentlemen to ever play the game. You know, the Montreal Canadiens had the great late Jean Beliveau, 
the Boston Bruins have had Petris Bergeron. Petris Bergeron, who was drafted in the 2003 NHL draft, one of the deepest drafts in the history of the National Hockey League. In the second round, 45th overall, the Canadians that draft year had two cracks at Petris Bergeron with their own picks. With pick number 10, they selected Andre Kostitsin. And with pick number 40, they selected Corey Urquhart. Urquhart played in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, the same league as Patris Bergeron. If you take a look at the first round, every player selected in the first round played in the National Hockey League. You, Jessamine, only played two games, but every player played in the National Hockey League. And when they got to Corey Yerkehart at pick 40, there's a couple of players who hadn't played. Pick number 34 was Mike Egener from Tampa, and pick number 35 by Nashville was Konstantin Glazachev. They never played in the National Hockey League. And with pick number 40, Corey Urquhart, who the Montreal Canadiens selected out of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, never played in the National Hockey League. Never played in the National Hockey League. And um, that one hurts because when you have a player in your backyard, you're supposed to have intel on that player that nobody else has. And Patrice Bergeron wasn't even on their radar. He wasn't on their radar. And so in a second, you're going to understand why I'm talking about this tonight. So once again... Tomorrow night is this great game in Quebec City where if you're a Boston Bruins fan, you have an opportunity to go there to pay tribute to Patrice Bergeron and say thank you very much for the great career that he's had with the Boston Bruins. A player, Patrice Bergeron, who went to three finals with the Bruins. They lost one in game six versus Chicago. They lost one in Game 7 versus St. Louis, and they won a Game 7 when they beat the Canucks in Vancouver and captured the Stanley Cup, and that was in 2011. Patrice Bergeron, 1,294 regular season games, 1,040 points, 427 of which were goals. 170 games in the playoffs, 128 points. 50 of which were goals. The Frank Selke in 2012. The King Clancy in 2013. The Selke in 2014. The Selke in 2015. The Selke in 2017. The Messier NHL Leadership Award in 2021. The Selke in 2022. The Selke in 2023. And like I said, the Stanley Cup in 2011. This player won the best defensive player award in the National Hockey League and is going to retire. There's not too many players that go out on top. Now, the ultimate is when you win the Stanley Cup and you retire. That's the ultimate. But Patrice Bergeron is going out as one of the best 200-foot players in the league he won the Selkie as the best defensive forward in the league. He's a first-line player, and he doesn't even have to pick up more. He never picked up more than 73 points in a season. Actually, he had picked up 79 points once. Pardon me. So his career high was 79 points in a season. After that, it was 73, then 70, then in the 60s and in the 50s, and even in the 40s. Mind you when he was in the 40s. I mean, a lot of those seasons he was, you know, he had some injuries. What a player. What a player. This guy is one of the most complete players that we've ever seen. I mean, the Selkies speak for themselves. He should have that award, that Frank J. Selkie. That Frank Selkie award, at one point we used to say that it should have been named after Carbono. Then at one point we said should have been named after Ganey. That trophy should be named after Patrice Bergeron. 
Vinny Poli says, Tony, who cares about Boston and Patrice Bergeron? Vinny, you're going to understand what I'm getting at, Vinny. Vinny, take it easy. Take it easy, Vinny. You're going to understand what I'm getting at, okay? So think about this. Think about how much it hurt all Montreal Canadiens fans that Patrice Bergeron was drafted a Bruin and had the career that he had, okay? So now Patrice Bergeron has said, you know what? That's it for me. I'm calling it quits. Uh, my body needs to take a break. He actually told Mikael Lalancette of Le Soleil du Québec earlier this evening. He told them that the next thing he wants to do is pick up an instrument. He doesn't know if it's a piano. He doesn't know if he's going to take piano lessons. He doesn't know if he's going to take guitar lessons. But that's the next thing he's going to do. And he wants to um, dedicate more time to his family. He was asked about working in hockey, and he said, not right away. There's a few things I want to do, you know, get back into music, dedicate some time in my family. But when I'm ready to get back, like I'm going to dedicate myself. If I'm going to do it, I have to be all in at 100% and give everything I have. So I say this to you, and I need you to think about this one for a second before you flip out or don't flip out. And Bruins fans who are watching, who are listening, and I'm going to open up the phone lines at one 585 7425 Give me a call. I say this. Kent Hughes was Patrice Bergeron's agent up until he took the job with the Montreal Canadiens. They're like this. They are incredibly close. Their relationship goes beyond agent client it's kind of like uh father son it's kind of like brothers like a big brother and obviously a much younger brother patrice bergeron how about him coming to work for the montreal canadians now kent hughes when he hired a um special advisor he hired Vinny lecavalier Vinny LeCavalier played for a couple of teams. So he wasn't his entire career with the Tampa Bay Lightning the way Patrice Bergeron was his entire career with the Boston Bruins. I get it. But when you think Vinny LeCavalier, you think Tampa Bay Lightning. He's working for the Montreal Canadiens. Marty St. Louis played for a couple of teams. But when you think Marty St. Louis is the head coach of the Montreal Canadiens, you would think the Boston Bruins would not want, would want nothing more than to have Patrice Bergeron work for the Boston Bruins front office, right? You know, he could be an ambassador. He could be a special advisor. You know, he's probably not going to be the president because Cam Neely will probably hold on to that job for like the rest of his life type of thing. But could you imagine how much it would irk the Boston Bruins and irk their fan base if Patrice Bergeron started working for the Montreal Canadiens, huh? And I'm getting a Harmit. No way. He's a Boston guy forever. That doesn't exist. What do you mean? Come on. He's a Boston guy forever, huh? Lorenzo says, what a legend. I don't know if he's talking about Bergeron or me, but I'll take it. Six and a third says Tony casually reaches for the spray bottle. Insta Custom says, Tony, the next coach of the Montreal Canadiens will be Jim Montgomery, maybe. But that's nowhere near being close because Marty St. Louis is going to be here probably for as long as he wants to have the job. Biden says, that industrial hairspray, Tony? No, it's not. It's just water. Gabrielle says, Tony, quelle coiffure? There's no coiffure ici, but there is a coiffure across the street. It's my buddy Joey the Barber at Moxie. Tony got me into spritzing, you guys. You should try it. You should try it. Why would he come back and work for Montreal? Because he probably always wanted to be a Montreal Canadian and didn't get that opportunity. Why not? He's going to be living, most likely, in Quebec. Or would like to come back to Quebec. Maybe he'll be living in Boston. I don't know. But usually come back home, right? usually come back home. 
Hey, by the way, today's a special anniversary. Let me take a look at the Yahoo chat and see um, and see um, if any of you know what anniversary it was today. When we talk about the National Hockey League and we talk about big trades, does anybody know it? Frank says, Tony, how's your son doing? Has he got any offers yet? My son is doing very well, and uh, he'll be playing in Portugal over the next year. I'll keep you posted. I'm on my way there in the next couple of weeks. Ah, Mike Medzloff says Gretzky. Tony says 99. Ryan Baker and Anthony say Gretzky. Six and a third says Gretzky. Tony Dilly says Gretzky. Biden says Gretzky. You guys got it with Gretzky. Let me take you back down memory lane. Some of you won't remember this. It was probably before your time. I do. I remember it like it was yesterday. Let's take a look at the video. With mixed emotions, a heavy heart for our community and our hockey club. But I guess with delight and sincere best wishes, for Wayne Gretzky that I announce and I guess more important confirm that the Edmonton Oilers have agreed to trade Wayne Gretzky to Los Angeles. Glenn Sather will, dis will discuss the specifics with you in a few moments. I'm disappointed about having to leave Edmonton. I truly admire all the fans and respect everyone over the years but um, I promised Ness I wouldn't do this. <laughs> but um, as I said, there comes a time when, when uh, That was something. Uh, I'll never forget that. Uh, sitting at the table with Wayne Gretzky was uh, Peter Pocklington, an entrepreneur uh, who made his uh, his money in the oil business out of Alberta. He was the uh, then owner of the Edmonton Oilers, uh, who, uh, by the way, years and years later, uh, was arrested at one point on allegations of um, uh, bankruptcy, fraud charges, and stuff like that. And, and the word has it that it was Glenn Sather, who was the general manager of the Edmonton Orders, who uh, had actually uh, bailed him out and uh, and at that point. But anyway, there's a little bit of history for you. And uh, Wayne Gretzky, um, you know, a deal that, uh, you know, brought the Edmonton Orders some money. Uh, Gretzky was dealt with Marty McSorley and Mike Krushelinski, who, by the way, is formerly, formerly from Villa Sal. Um, his, uh, his family uh, was... Uh, was um, his family was living here. As a matter of fact, his sister doesn't live too far from my house. Uh, in return for Jimmy Carson, uh, Marty Jelena, three first-round draft picks in 1988, 1991, and 1993, and $15 million in cash. That was the big trade. 
That was the big trade. And so what am I getting at? And that came right after the orders won the 88 cup. Uh, Gretzky's father told him that the orders were looking to trade him. Uh, Pocklington wasn't doing too well with the business and he needed some money. And that's why he started shopping Wayne Gretzky. And in every um, talk that was had, there had to be $15 million in cash. And finally, that trade materialized to L.A. And at the time, if memory serves me well, Wayne Gretzky was dating Janet Jones, who was from California. So, um, you know, it all kind of made sense. The orders went on to win a cup. The next year, in 89, um, was in nine, no, it was in 89, it was 90, because in 89, the Canadians lost to the Calgary Flames, if memory serves me well. But I believe it was 1990, I believe it was two years later, if memory serves me well, that the Edmonton Orders went on to um, win the, uh, the Stanley Cup. In 66 spinning, by the way, says that Tom Lapointe had the scoop Tom LaPointe of Showtime, and I, I believe that's accurate. I believe that Tom LaPointe is the one who broke the deal that, uh, yeah, that was it. He that broke the deal that uh, Wayne Gretzky was uh, getting traded. I'm not so sure if Tom announced it first. Was it Tom that broke the trade, or was it... Um, or was it, um, or was it Tom that had the scoop on Lafleur coming out of uh, retirement and going to play for the uh, for the Rangers? Anyway, long story short, there you have it. There you have it. So if Gretzky could be traded, Patrice Bergeron could come work for the Montreal Canadiens. Don't you think? Don't you think? We'll open up the phone lines at one triple eight five eight five seven four two five. And if 66 Spinning wants to do a video, we'll get him on video. Why not? A shout out, by the way, to Murphy Clinic, an aesthetic clinic specializing in medical aesthetic care. They offer permanent laser hair removal, as well as a wide range of treatments for skin problems such as acne, rosacea, fine lines, and more. They currently have two clinics, one located in Montreal Shop Angus and the second on the North Shore in Tarban. They're also opening soon in Quebec City. Visit murphyclinic.ca or on Instagram at Murphy Clinic. Also, shop all of your sports licensed lifestyle apparel, including hoodies, caps, and T-shirts of your favorite teams from all major leagues at sportbuffshop.com. Use code SICK10 for 10% off on all of their items. one 585 7425 Sammy's going to get to the phone lines. He's going to adjust his phone constantly. Who said that? Boo. This is coming in from Tony S. John Zimmerman. Hey, Tony, a shout out to your father-in-law for his recent birthday. Yes, thank you very much. As a matter of fact, it was uh, it was a couple of days ago. Thank you. We we're over at his house for supper, and John Zimmerman's dad owned the company where my father-in-law used to work. Joel Kravitz says Red Fisher had the scoop on the Gretzky trade. That sounds right to me. I think Tom Lapointe had the scoop. Uh, let me see. Uh, 6th of August, 88, the journalist de la Belle Province, Tom Lapointe, publié cette nouvelle qui a eu l'effet bombe aux quatre coins de la du Nord. Trois jours plus tard, Gretzky était changé. 66 spinning, Stéphane could be right. Tony, 509 viewers at this time of the year is simply amazing. Thank you very much. I think it's good. We had over 1,000 at the same time yesterday. We had over 1,500 the night before that. That was a lot better. He's not coming to Montreal. Okay, how do you know? Did you know that uh, Patrice Bergeron is from Quebec? Yes, he's from La Ciedad. Yes, I know. Others coming in. Dan Desjardins, everyone give this podcast a like. Thank you very much. Kevin McCart says hit the like. Thank you very much. 
Others coming in. Tony, do you think Pittsburgh can win with the new Big Four? They got one last chance here. They're on their last legs. Patrice Bergeron has come back because he's from the area. I'm aware. Thank you very much. He's a Nordiques fan, not a Habs fan. Yes. Will we hear from Jean-Charles Lajoie on the podcast soon? He has an open invitation anytime he wants. He knows that. Others coming in. Hello, Tony from Niagara Falls, Ontario. This is coming in from Mario Valella. Hello, Mario. Robert Simoniello, the best hockey Montreal Canadiens podcast is sick. Thank you very much. That was the goal. Patrick Deschamps, a sick podcast. Tony, thanks to you and your crew. Thank you very much. Justin is in Gatineau. Justin. Yes. C'est pas, c'est pas Justin Trudeau? No, it's not. <laughs> no, Justin and Gatineau. No, Justin, what's going on? Uh, not much, you. How's it going, Tony? It's going very well. Thank you very much for asking. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, this by is, the way, I'm, I'm by the way, about, uh, yesterday, yeah. by the, somebody sent me a message uh, saying that whoever told me that these glasses looked nice on me, these sunglasses, that they gave me wrong information. So here's the deal. No one ever told me that they looked nice on me, number one. Number two, I bought the sunglasses because they're the lightest sunglasses I've ever had, so they don't put a lot of weight on my head, and so I like them very much, and um, and that's it. So and And they're of incredible quality. Maui Jim sunglasses are absolutely fantastic, and so... You know, some people say they don't look nice on me. Other people are wondering why I'm wearing them. I'm wearing them because I feel like wearing them. You know what I mean? Because if I would yeah. wear, if I wouldn't wear them on the podcast, eh, I look like everybody else. But there's only select few that wear sunglasses during the podcast. And every now and then, I'm in the mood to wear the sunglasses. Do I have to justify myself, Justin, with everything? I don't know why, but I do the podcast and I get 8 million questions. Why are you wearing this? Why is your head like that? Yesterday, hey, yesterday, somebody told me that I'm going bald two days ago. Tony, you're going bald. So what did I do? I went back. I watched the podcast on my big screen television, Sony 85 inch. Thank you very much. Uh, and thank you, Sony. And I had to, I was looking at my scalp the entire time, and I have to tell you that it looked like there could be some bald spots, but it's also because I, I wasn't kind of like playing with it. I just left it there. You know what I mean? So anyway, yeah. Yeah, yeah but the sunglasses are nice, Tony. They go oh, well you. with the playground, too. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. At playground, when you yeah. play poker, you know what? You usually, you know, a lot of people like to wear the sunglasses, right? Yeah. I'm one of those players. I like, when I play uh, poker. I wear. Oh, did you did you win the bad beat last week at playground? Did you win it? Nope, nope, it's not me. I think someone won. Uh, what was it? Uh, close to a million dollars. The person won the bad beat, and the person who lost, obviously, uh, or the person who. So the, the the person who got beat bad won close to a million dollars, and the person who actually won the hand won close to five hundred thousand dollars. All the other people that were sitting at the table won, I believe, about seventy two thousand dollars, and everyone else that was in the casino probably won, give or take, about four thousand dollars. They they and set the they set a world was, record at playground what? last oh, week. Seven? They set a record. Yeah, the the, the bad beat was uh, down to what four seven four six four eights. Four, four eights. Okay, sorry. Yeah, you know how the gentleman lost. I'm gonna, nope. yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna freak you out now. Um, let's see if I could, uh, let's see if I could actually find this. Let's see if I can find it. Rick Flush. So this is this is uh, this is unbelievable. But to do it justice, to do it justice, what I'd have to do is I'd have to uh, bring up the uh, the picture on the screen of what the hand was, okay? So why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? During the meantime that I try and find it, okay? Why don't you tell me what's going on, Justin? What do you want to talk to me about tonight? Uh, I was calling about uh, the Petri trade, but something that uh, everybody uh, doesn't talk a bit about is um, 
the third guy that they got it's uh, Nathan Legary. Yeah. Uh, uh, first off, I, I I I'm I can't wait for the season to start, but uh, the rock the rocket this year is going to have a hell of a team. I hope so. And Nathan's going to be part of Nathan's going to be part of that. And the other thing is, I play baseball with uh, his cousin. And oh yeah. He told me tonight. Yeah, and he told me tonight that Pittsburgh didn't want to give Nathan. They wanted they wanted to give Samuel Poulain. Okay. Montreal wanted Nathan, so that means something that they they they, they did their the research on the on the kid and they really wanted. Could so, very well be, but now but now here's the question to you: Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. Why did the Canadians want either Nathan Lagarde or Samuel Poulain? Why they wanted Nathan instead of the Samuel Poulain? No, no. Okay, so the Canadians asked for Nathan, correct? Yeah. Pittsburgh, according to what you heard, offered Samuel yeah. Poulain. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So why did they offer Samuel Poulain instead of Nathan? Because probably they think he's a bus. No. Well, no. Well, because the Canadians asked for Nathan because he's a good Shenu. And if Pittsburgh didn't want to give him, they offered a good Shenu in return. So when the yeah, Canadians but, made this but, deal, but, it was important for them. It was important for them to get a Quebecer in the deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true. For but it, but Samuel Poulain is a first rounder, and Nathan's a third rounder, and they didn't want the first rounder. They took the third rounder. I understand that. I understand that. Okay, so look, I found the picture. I can't quite put it up. Okay, but uh, I'm I you know I I might put it up for everyone to see here. Hold on a second. Let me do this with my phone. Hold on. There we go. Okay. Look at this. All right. Can anyone see here? We have to zoom in. All right. Let me see. Anyway. So the player gets dealt two tens. Ten of clubs. Ten a pick. The other player gets dealt a six and nine of diamonds. Are you with me? Yep. All right, so they both bet, and on the flop comes three diamonds. So now one player already has five diamonds, and the diamonds that came out were two, seven, and ten. The other player now has three tens because he was dealt two tens, and now he's got a third ten on the floor. And the other player has a six, a seven, a nine and a ten of diamonds. Wow. So missing the eight of diamonds, but already has five diamonds. You with me? The yep. fourth card that comes out on the flop, the ten of hearts. So now you have one player who's got four tens, and you have another player who's got five so, diamonds yeah. and is missing the eight of diamonds. Which card comes out on the uh, on the river? The eight of diamonds. That's so crazy. four tens loses out to six, seven, eight, nine, and ten of diamonds. And the player who had the six, seven, eight, nine, and ten of diamonds won close to a million dollars. And the player who got bad beat with four tens. No, pardon me. The player who won the hand has half a million, and the player who got bad beat has close to a million dollars. Isn't that something? Yeah, that's crazy. Isn't that something? A yeah. world record set at Playground. <laughs> Proud sponsors of the SICK podcast. Do we know how to choose them or what? Yeah, you do. By the way, they're going through a big expansion, and you're going to see us there very, very often going forward. We're blessed. We're you know we're, we're we're blessed. Thank you very much for calling. By the way, we're 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 blessed with Energy Transportation Group La Beta TB with us for the longest time. We got great partners, so we thank all of you for saying the very nice things about the Sick Podcast. But we have to tell you, our partners are absolutely fantastic. La Beta TB, the Geloso Group. They're one of the first people that we went to see. We went to meet with, and they were on board just like that. They believed. Energy Transportation Group, who have been 
behind sports, especially in this city and in this province for the longest time. They came over to the Sick Podcast. We're very happy to have them. Mike is in Ottawa. Mike. Mike, you there? I'm here. Patrice Bergeron to the Habs. Tony, what a pleasure. It's uh, it's possible. I mean, uh, this management group, nothing gets past them. They're on top of it. They're best friends. Kent Hughes and Patrice Bergeron. They're, they're like, uh, they're best friends, man. Great. Get them a nice condo in uh, Rue, Rue Montréal there. Beautiful. Rue Montréal, really? Take care of them. The Great in place, place right? In, uh, I think it's Griffin. Griffin Town is beautiful down there. Gr- Griffin Town is absolutely beautiful. After Villa Sal, one of my favorite places in the city. Stunning. Yeah, I'm a fan of Dorval too. By the way, I like Dorval. Well, it, and is that correct me if I'm wrong? Is that where the Rocket play? You know what? I don't. I'm not sure. They got a beautiful stadium too. That whole new development. Is that right? Yeah, well, I don't. I, I I don't know. I didn't think so, but. I like Dorval. Oh, I like Dorval. I think the subway is right across the street, so you can get in and out. Villa Sal, by the way, used to be the home of Jacques Lemaire, and it currently is the home of Réjean Houle and Yvon Lambert. Uh, that's a, that's who a I catch up. I catch up with every now and then. I catch up with them every now and then. That's a dream. Yeah. And, and Martin, Jacques Martin, very underrated, I believe. Now, did you say the the, the rocket or the Laval rocket? Oh, Laval Rocket. Oh, Laval Rocket playing Laval. I thought you were talking about the Rocket. Oh, no, I don't. You know, like Morris Rocket Richard? Oof, the legend. Who obviously did not play Laval. Yeah, yeah. What's on your mind, Mike? Well, you know what? First, I think I got to thank you for the beautiful tribute yesterday to Joe. Uh, God bless, God rest his soul, but that was beautiful. So, Thank you. Thanks for sharing that to, to his family. Thank you. I actually, I, I watched it back earlier today and I was so rattled. Uh, Joe was actually 50. I said he was 46, but he was diagnosed with cancer at age 46. So he celebrated his 50th birthday a couple of months ago. And uh, once again, we, we had a we had a, a chat on FaceTime, he and I, about a month ago. And um, so when I saw the post four days ago uh, on Facebook that he uh, he passed away, it kind of, kind of broke my heart. But yeah. Um, Hurts. You know, uh, always it always hurts, and uh, it it hurts even more um, when you know that uh, obviously they had a, you know he had a child, and so it was it was tough. But um, yeah, I, I know uh, we, you know everyone was was great yesterday, and and may Joe rest in peace. Yeah, tell me, yeah, Joe, Joe's going to see a playoff a playoff uh, game from up above. Uh, I hope so. I'm sure he will. I'm sure he will. Yeah. So it's uh, it's a promising time, and and uh, I, I'm an eternal pessimist. You know, we, we've been burnt so many times since Patrick Roy left. Um, we've had superstars with Kovalev and and uh, PK Subban. You know, it could raise everybody from their seats. Um, but it's it's been a, it's been a roller coaster. With, yeah, don't uh, you know? Try not to be that way, Mike. Okay, because I have to tell you that I my upbringing was somewhat that the glass was more half empty than it was half full. But when you start changing the way you see things, and now you start seeing things more from a glass half full than a glass half empty perspective, life is so much more fun. Believe me when I tell you that. Thanks for calling, Mike. I appreciate it. We're going to continue pleasure. to get to the phone lines. Thank you very much. Um, okay, uh, let's go, uh, who are we going exactly? I think Frank, uh, wrote a comment that, uh, did he see Sammy and, uh, and yellow at playground? I'm sure he did. They're there all the time. They're there all the time. Others coming in at five, uh, one triple. I was going to say five one four. One triple eight five eight five seven four two five. One triple eight five eight five six. Claude is in Ottawa. Claude, how are you? Very good. Thank you. What good. I'm, you? I'm happy to talk to you. I was in the mood to take calls today. I told Daniello and Sammy, you know what? I'm going solo today. I want to take some calls. You know, I like to talk to the people. So, thank you for calling, Claude. Okay. Okay. So listen, Tony. Hello. I'm listening. Yeah. Ask me if I think 
Martin St. Louis is a good coach. Ask me that. Okay. Uh, Claude, do you think yes? Martin St. Louis is a good coach? I have no freaking idea. And I'll tell you why, Tony. Because as long as Drew Wang and Hoffman were on that team mm. and he was playing them, mm -hmm. I could not tell whether he was a good coach or not. And another thing, Tony, I, I don't understand is that when they would take like really bad penalties, Hoffman and Drew Wang, why would he never punish them? I would see them playing the very next shift. It was freaking me out. What do you think? Maybe he had orders. You think? Really? I don't know. You really think that this guy is that much of a puppet that he okay. would have to listen? Do you really I think, think that we have to... Do you really think that we have to think about Drouin and Hoffman getting ice time to give us an idea of whether Marty St. Louis is a good coach or not. Like, instead of you calling me tonight, Claude, yeah. and talking about yeah. Marty St. Louis' ability to adjust, Marty St. Louis as a communicator, Marty St. Louis as a motivator, Marty St. Louis as a modern thinker, Marty St. Louis and his concepts, Marty St. Louis and the way he had the Montreal Canadiens playing, despite being decimated with injuries and despite setting an NHL record over the past couple of seasons with more than 1,500 man games lost. Instead of talking about the way they transition, instead of talking about his ideas of what they're doing with player development, instead of talking about the influence that he had on Cole Caulfield and how he would tell Caulfield to set up on the power play and how he would ask him to pump fake and how he would ask him to go around and then see players doing what he was asking them to do and then they were scoring goals. Instead of talking about what he was able to do for Cole Caulfield's career and Caulfield is one of the top goal scorers in the game if you count the amount of games he's played and the amount of goals he's scored since the coaching change, since Marty St. Louis arrived Instead of talking about all of that, you call and say, you ask me, Tony. Tony, ask me if you think Marty St. Louis is a good coach. So what do I do? Because I'm either a fish stupid or just a nice guy. I ask you, hey, Claude, do you think Marty St. Louis is a nice guy? And I had a feeling when I asked you that you were going to give me one of these answers. I don't know if you're trolling. I don't know if you just don't like the guy, but I Tony, think you're Tony. out of line. Tony. Claude. React, okay? But Claude. Between you and me. Listen. Between Claude. you and me and the thousands and thousands of people watching right now. <laughs> okay, but Tony. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, seriously. Why? Were we joking before? It was painful to watch, okay? It, it, it could it couldn't be more painful than this call, Claude. It couldn't be it couldn't be more painful than this call. Listen, huh? that Drew who made believe he was a hockey player, he screwed us over. Drew is gone. Why are you talking about huh? the past, Claude? Claude, why are you talking about the past? Because I'm traumatized, Tony. Let's talk about the future. Let's talk about the future. Yuri Slavkowski yes. last week told a reporter out of Slovakia that he planned on doing better than his six goals in 39 games. And there's a couple of friends of mine who went on social media and they wrote, breaking, we have breaking news. Slavkowski promises to have a better season. There's so many All good right. things you could have said about Marty St. Louis, but you know what? For whatever reason, you no, just wanted to no, hate tonight. I'm gonna you just to wanted to hate. I'm, I'm telling you, with the lineup he had to deal with last year, yeah, I yeah, not tell, yeah, if he was a good strategic manager or not. I yeah, tell. 
That's what you I'm know saying. he was. Why are you asking the obvious? It's like calling in and saying, Tony, is there anybody better in radio, TV, or podcasting than you in Montreal, in Quebec, or in Canada? The answer is obvious. You don't have to ask the question. Everyone knows. Often imitated, never duplicated. You understand? Capisce? Me capite tu? Capisce? I hear you, bro. Hear yeah, you. you hear me. Yeah, you hear me. And the well, hundreds and thousands of Montreal Canadiens fans around the world hear me too. Listen to me. How do you like poetry? Yeah. You like poetry, I, yes I, or no? Actually, I, I'm a rapper. You're yeah. a rapper? Yeah. Okay, I'm a poet. You ready? Yeah, go ahead. Roses are red. Violets are blue. Claude, go to bed. Emosi tu. <laughs> Child Claude, I gotta go. Your Claude, I'm Marinaro. Get rid of him. Suspend him for two weeks. Two weeks. Where are we going? By the way, I can talk a little bit louder because my wife is in Portugal right now as we speak. So, you know, I have pretty much the house to myself. John in Montreal. So uh, if, you know, everybody watching wants to come over tomorrow and uh, just uh, join me in my spa and we'll have some uh, some drinks. Uh, we'll have some uh, La Bitta TV. Why not? John is in Montreal. John, what's going on? Hey, Fat Tony. How are you doing, Fat Tony? Okay, John, we got to go. All right. John was famous for about five seconds on the Sick Podcast, and uh, we got his number, which is not very bright. So the number will be blocked, and he'll never be able to call again. Good riddance. one 888 585 one Seven four two five. You know, to call in just to like, you know, what are we doing here? But well, people don't have anything better to do than just to, to, to well, well, what's going on here? What's going on? Breaking news. We got breaking news. Slavkowski says he'll do better than six goals in 39 games. Guy's calling me about Marty St. Louis. I'm not going to lie to you. I love Marty St. Louis. I like him. I like him a lot. Nice guy. Good coach. He even sent me a note on my birthday. Maybe that's why I like him. No, I like him because he's a good coach and because he sent me a note on my birthday. Tony, are you Abruzzese? No, I'm not. Sicilian, 100%. Thank you very much. Neil Unsworth. Let's uh, suspend Neil Unsworth also. Uh, if uh, Claude in Ottawa is suspended for two weeks, Neil Unsworth will be suspended for two months. Tony needs a spritz. One spritz. Two spruits. All right, okay. Where are we going? We're going to take one more? Alex. Is this Alex? Alex, are you there? Going once? Going yeah, twice? Uh, now he's there. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm on. We're live. Oh, are you going to speak with Tony Marinaro? Yeah. Okay, Alex, you're going on in five seconds, okay? Perfect. Let's go to Alex from Habs Fan TV. I'm Marinaro. Alex, what's going on? Tony, I, I want you to ask me something. Yeah. I want you to ask me if Martin St. Louis is a good coach. Alex? Is Marty St. Louis a good coach? Absolutely. Next question. Now, Next question. Now, here's do you a, say this as a matter of factly, or is this breaking news? This is it's not breaking news. It's just breaking. Yeah. Just breaking. Where's my friend Cedric tonight? Uh, Cedric, he's probably... Uh, I don't know. He's probably having some ice cream or something. No, no, but you guys are usually, you're, you're inseparable. You're Every time I see you, you're always together. And now you're calling in 
on the Sick Podcast with me, Marinaro. You're alone. There's no breaking news. You answered the question about Marty St. Louis. I want to know where Cedric is. Ooh, this is a good question. I'm gonna I'm gonna ping him at the He point. was awarded a penalty shot a couple of weeks ago. You called over the referee. You asked for the penalty shot. They gave him the penalty shot. You were trying to make Cedric famous. What does he do? He had one job on that penalty shot. One to score the goal. What does he do? He misses. What you should have done is take him out, take him out of the lineup. But you he know what? Choked under pressure. Right after that, he scored. Oh, he scored right after, after that, Joshua. eh? So, yeah. Then I kind of had no choice to kind of leave him on. And also, we already yeah. gave the ref 400 bucks. So it was kind of hard to, you know, kind of end it there. Now, did you pay the ref before the game or after the game? Uh, before, because we lost. So after there was nothing to pay him, we lost. I understand. Yeah. Okay. So, cash money or check? Uh, cash, all cash. Cash goes a long way, by the way. Greeks, Italians, that's how we do it. That's the way you do it. You had the money in your pocket or in your sock? Um, I had it in my pocket. Yeah. The Italian men usually keep it in their sock. The Italian women usually put it in their bra. Mm. You understand me? Capisce, Capito? Capisce, Capisce, Capisce. Alex, what's going on? So here's, so here's, I decided... You and I haven't talked in a while, have we? I know we haven't. The last time we talked was at the LSHL game, not yesterday, but the week before. Yeah. We were hanging out in the VIP section. Yes, indeed. Yes. You're doing a good job on the commentating. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. But that was the week before. Oh, okay. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's true. Uh, Alex, what, are, are you guys working on some breaking news for tomorrow? What's going on here? Uh, did tomorrow... you interview anyone coming out of their garage? Today? Why didn't you guys? So you guys are on to something here, waiting for the players to come out of the garage while interviewing them. I'm wondering, why don't you take it to their house? You know, when they come out of their garage and their house to actually wait across the street? That would be something. So, so the thing is, we, we, we already set up kind of like a, a tree house. Yeah, outside Nick Suzuki's house. That's that's already set up for next. Yeah, yeah. Um, and otherwise, for the parking, you know, like it's just just, they're starting to get a lot of traffic and stuff. So, do you remember the Jose Theodore story? At one point, Jose Theodore got hurt. He hurt his leg. I think he broke his leg or something. Anyway, it was a kind of cast. I don't know. Remember, but the the media actually parked outside his house to see when he was coming down the stairs. If there was actually a cast and if the leg was actually broken, we, you know, we, at one point we got to that point in this city, we were taking images of players coming out of their house to see if their leg was actually hurt. I could when Sacco Koivu was operating, when he got the stick in the eye, which I believe was in the series versus the Carolina hurricanes, I could be wrong. The year the hurricanes won the cup, I could be wrong, but I'm usually not. There was a photographer that got into the hospital and snapped a picture with the flash right in front of Koivu after he got operated on his eye. But you believe this? I I could believe Montreal media. I could could believe that. Now, Alex, uh, at what point uh, are we at here with you and the sick podcast? Well, well, what's the story here? Are we fr- have we given you access to the private line number? Do you have a special code? Do you have a special number? Or you just called the same number as everyone else? What's the story here? I called I called the same number as everyone else. You called the same you know number as everyone else, yeah. I, I had called a long uh, a, a year ago. A, oh, we really? Each other. I said, oh, well, you know, I have uh, I have a Habs account. You were like, oh, interesting. We've, oh, we've is that right? Eh? Very interesting. Yeah, yeah. We've come a long way, but a yeah, long way. Have... I like the site. Would you like to sell it to me? I'll buy it from you, uh, cash, uh, the way you like it. Cash, cash. Mm-hmm. What the what, what? How much are we talking? Let's have a live negotiation. Okay. What do you think it's worth? Um. Hmm. I don't know. Is it? Well, talk about knowing your product. I ask you what you think it's worth. You tell me you don't know. Ask me what the sick podcast is. Ask me what the sick podcast is worth right now. Ask me. How much is it worth? Fifty million. Fifty million. Okay. Fifty million. 
Listen, if you want, I can break it down for you. I'll tell you how I get to that number. Tell me. I ask you what your uh, what, what, what what your account is worth. You tell you you, you don't even know. This what, what, what are we doing here? The the calculation I do is I take Kirby Doc's number number yeah. seventy seven. Yeah. I take uh, how much a season ticket costs in the Reds. Yeah. Yeah, I take that. Now, whoever buys, if I buy it, by the way, do I get Danik with it or Danik is separate? He's uh, Oh, Danik is separate. You can't buy him. He's, Danik. Uh, I can't buy Danik, put him on the sick podcast so he can yell Tony Marinero, the sick podcast, the, do the do the dance and stuff like that, all that stuff. I can't do that, eh? Not possible. He's not for hire. Spock so tried to hire him. And they, they said uh, he wasn't interested. Call me tomorrow. I'll buy your site cash. We do it the old-fashioned way. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Alex, oh. say hi to Cedric for me. I will, for sure. I think he likes me more than you do, by the way. <laughs> I mean, you say hi to me, but I just never get the feeling that you really like me all that much. I'll find out tomorrow if you sell me the site or not. We'll find out. I think Cedric likes me. He does. Very good. I'll talk to you soon. All right. There you have it, Alex from Habs Fan TV. That's it. He was the one last week. Breaking news. We got breaking news. Break. I almost broke everything, even the microphone. I'm going to buy his site tomorrow. If he's got an intention to sell, I'm going to buy it. That's the way it goes down. I ask him, what does he want? He, he doesn't even know. Boo. Anyway, that's it for tonight or what? Can I bring on Sammy now? Sammy! What's up, Tony? We're buying a site tomorrow. Get ready. Are you in or you want me to go in by myself? I'm in. You're in? Yep. Okay, we buy it tomorrow. All right. What's on your mind, you? What's on my mind? You're on fire tonight. What, what, you know what? We, we stop it now, though, or what? So, like, that we get, we add the hour and that's it? That's it, my friend. All right. Big night tonight. Big day tomorrow, by the way. Big meeting planned with Christophe. <laughs> yeah, let's hope not. Big meeting, big meeting planned. Eh? You got too many meetings lined up. Is that it? Is yeah, that it? We, now we have to line up that meeting with Christoph. All right, okay. For Agnello and Sammy at Master Control, tell all your friends about it. This podcast is pretty sick. Like me, like them. Look at look at sick in the background. Look at that. That's a beauty, huh? S-I-C-K. If you like it, like it, share it with your friends. Comment S-I-C-K, S-I-C-K, S-I-C-K. And if you're going to leave us a review on Apple, Leave us a five-star review. Why? Because we deserve it. For Agnello and Sammy at Master Control. Sammy, yeah. 50 million. I want 50 million. <laughs> Minimum. And if we don't get it tomorrow, the price goes up to 75 million the week after. Or we don't sell it all. For Agnello and Sammy at Master Control. There Cavallaro. I'm Marinaro. <laughs> And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow The Sick Podcast with Tony Marinero on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. The Sick Podcast is brought to you by Energy Transportation Group. Driven to be different. La Vida TV. Embrace your true nature. And Playground, your premier gaming destination.